This video is sponsored by MSI. Hi Brolis, Marvin here from TechBeerall.com where we do unboxings, reviews, and sexy B-rolls. And today we have another sneak peek as we take a look at the new MSI Mag Z590 Tomahawk Wi-Fi motherboard. This is the latest mainstream offering from MSI for the newest Z590 chipset featuring support for 10th gen Intel Core processors and future generation Intel processors using the LGA1200 socket. In this video, we'll do an unboxing, parts overview, and discuss its key features so that you can have an idea of what you should expect from this mid-range Z590 motherboard. With that being said, let's get into it. Alright guys, so right here we have the box for the MSI Mag Z590 Tomahawk Wi-Fi motherboard. For those who are not yet familiar, Mag means Massive Arsenal Gaming, which is MSI's mainstream offering. There is also the Meg lineup or Massive Enthusiast Gaming lineup for their flagship boards and the MPG lineup or the Massive Performance Gaming lineup which is just above the Mag budget category. We also have the familiar military aesthetics for the packaging and around the box we just have some branding, some technical information and then at the back of the box we have all of its key features and specifications. So we have the extended heatsink, 2.5G LAN and Wi-Fi 6, Audio Boost 5, Power Delivery Architecture, Lightning Fast Gen 4, M.2 Shield Frozer, and an image preview of the motherboard. We also have an image preview of the input and output ports and the specifications right here. We'll tackle all of these one by one, so let's just see what comes in the package. Okay, so upon opening the box, the first thing that will greet you is the motherboard itself and another accessory box right here. Inside this accessory box, we have a couple of items. We have the detachable external antennas, which will be connected directly to the back panel compared to other motherboards that have an external antenna that you can place away from your PC. We also have an included USB flash drive, which I guess you can use for updating the BIOS or installing Windows and what have you. Next, we have the MSI Mag Z590 Tomahawk Wi-Fi motherboard itself. But before this, let's take a look at the rest of the package contents first for the complete unboxing experience. So underneath this platform, we have all the remaining contents. We have an MSI Dragon badge, a couple of SATA cables, one straight and one angled. We also have three sets of M.2 screws and standoffs. And aside from that, we have a bunch of paperwork and accessories. We have the shoutout promotion, a set of army theme stickers, which is pretty cool actually. And then we have the sort of, I guess, product catalog. And then we have the MSI reward program guide, a thank you card, and finally, the quick installation guide and the valuable user manual. And that's about it for the unboxing experience. Now let's take a look at the MSI Mag Z590 Tomahawk Wi-Fi motherboard. Okay, so at first look and touch, it has a decent weight to it, but the majority of that weight comes from the massive VRM heatsink. Like, it's probably one of the chunkiest VRM heatsinks that I've encountered so far, and this is a good thing more than anything else. It does shift the weight balance though towards the left side, as everything else feels lighter, aside from the heatsinks on the M.2 slots and the chipset. Not a big deal once secured inside a chassis. And I guess I just really want to emphasize this massive heatsink. And what's even better here is that this thing is entirely made out of aluminum, not plastic with fancy RGB lighting. And not only that guys, this VRM heatsink actually spans across the entire VRM, well except for the capacitors. But it's not only on the MOSFETs but on the chokes as well as you can see here which is really awesome thermal performance wise. It also features this sort of terrace design for efficient heat transfer and release and as you can see it is quite thick as well. We also have a substantial amount of aluminum heat sink on the north side that also covers all the MOSFETs and chokes. However, I feel like they could have stepped it up even further by adding a heat pipe connecting these two heat sinks for more heat transfer but I figured that could also introduce some additional cost especially given the fact that this motherboard is in the mid-range category. Nevertheless, judging by how it looks and feel, I think it has the potential to perform quite decently in terms of keeping the VRM temperature in check. Now before we discuss anything else, let's talk about power delivery. For a mid-range board, it has a decent 14 plus 2 plus 1 duet rail power design with 60 ampere DR MOS and controlled by a digital PWM IC. This essentially means it has 14 power stages dedicated for cleaning the power directed to the CPU, allowing for stable performance especially when overclocking. In addition, it also has 8 plus 4 pin CPU power connectors providing substantial power for overclocking. Now interestingly enough, we also have a supplementary 6 pin PCIe power connector to provide dedicated power to the PCIe slots. Speaking of overclocking, for the uninitiated, 
don't worry as MSI has a feature called Game Boost allowing you to overclock your system with just a press of a button. This is for both the CPU and the memory. As for the CPU socket, like I said earlier, it still features the same LGA1200 socket that we have on the older Z490 chipset, so it is compatible with then-gen processors and future generation Intel processors using the same LGA1200 socket. Now let's proceed to the parts overview as we move around this motherboard and check out the rest of its components. So right here we have a system fan header which ideally is for the access fan. And then moving towards this side, we have the audio components. We have these high quality audio capacitors. And we also have the audio isolation design, which basically means there is a dedicated section for the audio components. And aside from that, it also has a separate PCB layer for both the left and right audio channels. In terms of the actual audio codec, we have the Realtek ALC4080. Now moving towards the bottom side, we have the front panel audio header a 5V 3-pin addressable RGB header, a 12V 4-pin RGB header, two system fan headers, a Thunderbolt add-on card header, the supplementary 6-pin PCIe power connector, and behind that we actually have an LED switch, and then we have two USB 2.0 headers, two upward-facing SATA ports, the fan panel headers that include a buzzer and speaker headers, a system fan header, and we actually have another system fan header here on the right side, which are ideal for the front case fans. And then besides that, we have four right angle SATA ports. Moving a little bit farther towards the upper right side, we have a USB Type-C front panel header and then a USB 3.0 front panel header. And then after that, we have the 24-pin power connector for the motherboard. Besides that, we actually have four LEDs for troubleshooting and then we have a system fan header and a pump header right here. Moving towards the top side, we have another 5V 3-pin addressable RGB header and a 12V 4-pin RGB header. Now hidden beside the memory slot is the CPU fan header. And then moving across the other side, we have the 8 plus 4 CPU power connectors. Now right here we have the memory slots which supports up to 128GB of memory and up to 2933MHz when using a 10th gen Intel Core processor. Above that is considered overclocking up to 5333MHz. Now for the M.2 slots, we actually have 3 on this motherboard. The first one is directly connected to the CPU which supports the latest PCIe 4.0 X4 or Gen 4 technology, which allows us to use the super fast Gen 4 NVMe SSDs with a compatible Intel processor. The other two M.2 slots are directly connected to the Z590 chipset and support PCIe 3.0 X4 as well as SATA. Intel Optane memory support is also available here. Now, the SATA 2 port will be disabled when using the second M.2 slot, and the SATA 5 and 6 ports will be disabled when using the third M.2 slot, so consider that. Now, as for the expansion slots, we have two PCIe X16 slots. The first one is directly connected to the CPU and also supports PCIe 4.0 when using a compatible Intel processor. It is also reinforced with substantial soldering to support heavier graphics cards. The second longer PCIe slot is directly connected to the Z590 chipset and supports PCIe 3.0 X1. The other two shorter PCIe slots are also directly connected to the chipset and support PCIe 3.0 X1. Now, the heat sinks for the M.2 slots I'd say is pretty adequate, but smaller than what's available on higher tiered motherboards. The thermal pads are also single-sided, so take that in mind when using ultra-fast Gen 4 NVMe SSDs. The good thing is that they are quite thick as you can see here. They are also nicely numbered, that not only is functional in terms of identification, but also adds to the overall military design element this motherboard has going on. Overall, in terms of the design, construction, and components here on the front side, it pretty much has everything you need in a mid-range build with massive heatsinks for the VRMs, decently sized M.2 heatsinks, and a good amount of system fan and RGB headers. And at least from what we're seeing here, it maintains the trend the Tomahawk lineup is known for. Now, flipping it on the back side being a mid-range board, it doesn't have anything fancy here. We don't have any metal backplate, and I don't think we have any LED backlighting here either. But we do have some case standoff warning to make sure not to damage the motherboard when placing it inside the chassis. Finally, flipping it on its side, we have the back panel I.O. Here we have a display port, an HDMI port, a small flash BIOS button, two USB 2.0 ports, four USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, a 2.5G Ethernet port, one USB 3.2 Gen 2 port, and one USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 20GB per second Type-C port. We also have the Wi-Fi 6 antenna connectors, 5 audio jacks, and an optical SPDIF out port. As you can tell, we have a fairly substantial amount of USB ports, 
and a good combination of USB 2.0 and 3.0 as well as a faster USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 Type-C port. Overall, like I said earlier, the MSI Mag Z590 Tomahawk Wi-Fi pretty much has everything you need in a mid-range build without the extra bells and whistles of higher-end motherboards but also without the additional cost that comes with those extra features. What you're getting here is an adequate amount of headers, storage options, connectivity, and at least on paper, a pretty decent power delivery design with more than substantial cooling solution. Performance and benchmarks aside, I feel like it provides the usual feature set we've been familiar with from the Tomahawk series motherboards. Now, obviously this is not a review and more like a quick preview about this new motherboard. And as much as I want to make a build video about this, I don't have an Intel processor right now, so yeah. Price and availability to follow, especially for the local market here in the Philippines. Make sure to follow MSI Gaming Philippines official Facebook page for more updates. And there you have it guys, thank you for watching. Huge thanks to MSI for sending this in. You can get these ones available from the link below. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you like this, and see you next time. Have a great day guys, you're awesome.